Yes, this is a complex cliff, but the plan a relatively simple one. Take one ancient landscape, one of the oldest on the planet, and laced with gruesome climbs, truly awful descents and never-ending mountain traverses, and roll in one new bike, as in new new bike. Edge MTB technology then goes head to head into the abrasive, unforgiving reality of a land manufactured millions of years ago in search of, well, the ultimate all round EMTB, I guess. But in between the merciless angles, the riverbeds and cliffs, we get to grips with a drop of granite, some man made flow on pre prepared single track, a double shot of espresso, and of course, a 99 on the beach. If only. Over the next few days, we will be exploring the full range of capabilities of this 150mm all-rounder from Canyon. It's very much power on, game on, the all-new Spectral on. So we begin our journey then with a cliff because when I say full range, I actually mean it. Now Canyon, who have sent us this bike, say that the Spectral is an all-rounder, but I want to properly find out. The schedule for our journey, our pursuit of the ultimate all-round EMTB, is to take on a selection of trails and terrain, encounters and exertion. Yes, this is an electric mountain bike. On the cliffs, we'll be looking at gearing, geometry, motor and tyres. On the open mountain, the range, the app, the adjustments, and of course, a comfortable seat. Into the downhill, does more travel equate to a more capable descender? Do you really need more travel? At the Trail Centre, we will focus more on the component part of the story. On the rocks, we will prove that sometimes the surface plays a part as well. And finally, down to the beach for that 99. So when you talk to a lot of people about e-bikes, they think, ah, oh, yes, the hills will be easier. And many simply jam it into the high power mode and hammer those gravel trails. But I really think that's doing e-bikes, sorry, e-mountain bikes, a massive disservice because after all, they're capable of so much more. Now there are three key things that enable an e-mountain bike to climb strongly. The motor, obviously, but also the geometry and the tires. Obviously the third, fourth point is actually the rider. You need the skills. Now the reason why geometry is important because such things as the C-tube angle and the chainstay affect where the weight and therefore the grip is on your tires. On mellow climbs, you don't really need to get into such extreme positions. And remember, you also need a bike that is a capable downhiller too. So Canyon have tried to get the balance right between a bike which is a great ascender and one which is a great descender. Spectral is designed to go up as well as down. And of course the tyres are super important. It does not matter how much power or how good the angles are if you're not able to get the power down to the ground. Good tyres are key for climbing.
Yeah, it's set. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty minimalist, isn't it? Uh, I like it. I like how it's uh, integrated into the um, handlebar there. And by way of the E-Tube app, you can customise many things on the EP8 from acceleration to the amount of power is kicking out. So what does the new EP8 software mean? Well, the modes have been adjusted over the previous model in terms of how much assistance they provide and is much more customizable. So in other words, you can tinker and tune a load more with this new motor. 10 different settings. You can also make presets and the torque can be set anywhere between 20 to 85 newton meters. This is massive news and makes e-mountain bikes on such a different level to old style mountain bikes. Of course, you've still got all the on-screen detail I mentioned earlier, such as cadence and the quick access to custom settings, which is great for changing the settings when you go from this kind of riding to a more open mountain. Now, not everyone wants to put their life on the line on cliffs, and surely this is what e-bikes are all on about. Big mountain adventures. Now, we're up in the hills in North Wales. And the great thing about the uh, E-Tube app is you can actually custom set um, the outputs of your bike from high power, such as those cliff rides, to when you get into the longer open mountain environment and you can turn the motor power down so you get much more range uh, out of the bike. Crikey, Ben, get a fire lit, will you? It's a bit chilly in here. Right, where were we? Uh, EP8 and battery. Now, there's an all new 625 watt hour battery on the Spectral on, which means an increased range. Uh, so I'm weighing 90 kilos, and in the winter months, in trail mode, I can do a complete ride of around about 3,000 feet of climbing. Now, obviously, that's in really heavy, soggy conditions, which does tend to take more from the battery. Now, obviously, in a dry climate, and maybe when the full effect of a dry January give my bathroom skills a right kick in, obviously, that range is going to be far higher. Now, an all-mountain bike needs to have an all-mountain mindset. Lightweight, long range, good componentry, good geometry to be able to climb, as well as a powerful motor such as the EP8. Now, remember, you, the rider, do have some responsibility as well, because I don't think it gets much more all-mountain than this. Whoa. Many believe that an e-mountain bike should really be put to the test in both uphill and downhill situations. And if you're in a mountain situation like this, no doubt there will be the odd style or bog to carry across, or maybe a cliff face. And with that in mind, the Spectral On at just over 20 kilos is pretty lightweight. question we get asked quite frequently on the channel is what is the best e-bike or should I say what is the best e-mountain bike that's a really tricky question because there are so many good ones out there at the moment now part of the responsibility in answering that question actually lies with you the rider you need to think about where you ride your bike the type of riding you do I mean let's face it slidey slate ain't ideal and also your height and your weight of course, the reason for some of that, and it might seem a little bit straightforward to some people, is that it is actually possible to have too much bike, machine gun to a knife fight and all that. Yes, I know, we have been on many trips where we've taken a 180 bike and a 150 bike, and yes, the 180 can actually climb as well as a 150. So the question is, why have less 
when you can have more. I think it's all about sensitivity because it is actually good to get some feedback off the bike. I mean, steamrollering big rock sections is all well and good, but it's also good to be able to learn how to dance that bike around some sections. It's a little bit like uh, people's obsession with four wheel drive cars that live in city centers. I mean, what is wrong with the Peugeot 106? Yeah, everything. I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying. An all-mountain bike obviously needs to have all-mountain components as well. Now I know we're in a trail centre but actually a trail centre has its own needs as well. For example the surface. Now a lot of the time the surface can become a little bit washed out so there's little micro steps uh, in the trail which actually take your speed away. So large volume tyres, we've got a 2.6 in the back and a 2.5 in the front, actually help you maintain momentum across the trail. Obviously, there's other things, a seat dropper, um, that's gonna help you uh, raise or lower the seat depending whether you go uphill or downhill, and that helps you maintain your momentum. Uh, in terms of wheels on this bike, you might have seen that little Robin checking out the uh, Reynolds wheel set there. Um, we've got a 27.5 on the back and a 29 up front. Handlebars, now, on this bike, there is an integrated combined bar and stem. Now, I've seen many, many so-called journalists going, nah, 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 nah. don't like the shape of the bar. Nah, nah, nah. Look, handlebars are a personal thing. So it's ludicrous that sometimes bikes are marked down because of the wrong shape bar. Bonkers. On this particular model, the CF9, we've got powerful XTR four pot brakes in there uh, with 203 mil rotors. Um, and flip it around. So obviously when you're rising and falling with the terrain, you need a good range of gears. And as you can see, we've got uh, XTR 12 speed on the back there. Big, big range of gears. I love the integration of this bike. The small, small details. Look at the uh, integrated seat clamp there, super smooth. You got the USB mount on the top there for charging your lights or your telephone, probably the former. And look at this area down here, the down tube and where it meets up with the motor. Really, really, really smooth lines there. So here we have classic trail center territory. And as I mentioned, you need a seat dropper to rise and fall with changes in the terrain. But when things change into a more downhill scenario, it's all about the big burly components such as <laughs> grippy tires. And then of course, sometimes big bad beaten up terrain can become fast and flowy. In which case, you need a bike which is light, lively, and progressive. Oh, so much fun. Oh, hold up. Then you go read the terrain, and then suddenly we go from downhill to a climbing situation. So seat dropper, motor, all come into play. It is so good tuning into the rhythm of the EPA motor. I mean, it's all about cadence, anticipation, momentum. I mean, this is trail mode. We're going to boost here for this little technical section. Whoa, oh my God.
Now, a lot of the time, bikes over 160 mil travel can really suck the life out of terrain such as this. What you want is a bit of sensitivity, some feedback. Oh my God, it's so fast. You simply do not need more than 150 mil in terrain like this. You need to generate drive by pumping the ground. Whoa. And so as we dropped out of the clouds, the estuary and the ocean beckoned, but our attention was being constantly pulled back to the land all around us. The question was, do we head back to the hills or steal a straight line for the beach? Nice colour blue. Ah, lifeboat. I tell you what, could have done with a lifeboat on some parts of that trip. It was so much water in those mountains. Uh, but what a journey. I think we pretty much took in every imaginable type of terrain uh, which you take a mountain bike into. Um, and in some ways, I think that's the only real way to find out if a bike is up to the task in hand. So folks, there it is, all mountain, mixed wheel size, 29, 27.5, uh, 12 speeds, seat dropper, 150 mil travel, 625 watt hour battery with that EP8 motor, which is fully adjustable. Is it all mountain? I think it is. Let us know your thoughts.